Good evening. Thank you, Brother Roy. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you all for joining us online. I hope that you've had the opportunity to pick up an announcement sheet. And those of you that are online, I hope you've had an opportunity to see that uh, in your email. And I want you to take notice of all the things that are, that are going on. So please read that carefully. Uh, and take note to those things that pertain to you and your age group. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of those on there, especially uh, summer events already uh, planned that are, that are on there, especially for our young people. So um, make a note of that. Vacation Bible School is on there. So uh, keep that in mind uh, as well. I want to encourage all of us to remember those on our prayer list. And I just want to uh, bring some updates to you. We have one added uh, that uh, was just given. Uh, a young man in the sixth grade here named Chucky. He's a friend of uh, Lola Blakely. Um, he's having, he has a blood disease, and so uh, request prayers for him. Um, uh, also, uh, continue to remember uh, the Crumwells in your prayers. Uh, as uh, Bailey uh, has a, a mass uh, behind our sternum, uh, they did um, remove some uh, lymph nodes and did a biopsy on that. Um, and so uh, some, some of that, some news have come back from that already, but uh, there's still some further tests they want to do. But uh, please remember uh, Bailey, remember Stephen and Melanie and also Sailor uh, as they're all concerned for her. Uh, but uh, we're thankful that there's, there's some good news. And so I uh, want to continue to remember all of them in our prayers as well. Uh, also continue to remember uh, Lois Ann Seton as she is in uh, the rehab facility at Jackson. Uh, they're close to the hospital and um, uh, she is improving. So we're thankful for that. Um, and then all of, the, all of the rest on our prayer list, remember them uh, as well. I don't have an update on each one of those, but we have several recovering from various things, so remember them uh, in your prayers as well. All right, uh, we're going to begin with a prayer, and then we're going to continue our study on uh, heroes of faith, Moses. So let's uh, bow as we pray tonight. Holy Father, thank you so much for all the blessings of life that you give us. We are so thankful for the opportunity to come together tonight to study your word. We pray that you'll bless our time together. Thank you for those that are joining us online, and we pray that you will bless them as well. Father, we uh, thank you for the opportunity to live in uh, this area uh, and in this nation, and we ask that you will continue to bless our nation, especially uh, as we continue to go through difficulties and division uh, and Father, as we uh, try to move forward from this pandemic uh, in a different um, way of life and dealing with different things. And uh, Father, we pray that you will help our families and help those individuals. Uh, Father, help us as our church family as we seek to move forward. Bless our elders as they make decisions uh, for us. I uh, pray that you will help them to bless them with the wisdom that they need to make the right decisions for us that uh, we may move forward toward the opportunity to, to continue to be able to get together more and study your word together more and fellowship. Uh, and Father, we thank you for that. Just bless them as they make those plans as well. Father, we um, have several on our list tonight we'd like to lift up to you. Father, we are especially mindful of the Cromwells uh, as Bailey is uh, dealing with uh, these uh, issues with uh, this mass and father we just uh, we're, we're, we're thankful that she is uh, doing well now and we're, we're thankful father that uh, some of the initial uh, test results um, are more favorable than what was originally uh, concern concerning and father I just pray that you will continue to be with Bailey and continue to bless her uh, that you will give her uh, comfort and peace and strength and courage uh, to continue to move forward. Uh, Father, that you will be with uh, Stephen and Melanie and Sailor and all their family as, as they're concerned and uh, as, as they are uh, thinking about Bailey and thinking about um, uh, the next steps. I pray that you'll be with those doctors and that are attending to her, and I pray that you will help them to uh, make the uh, best decisions uh, for Bailey and 
Uh, Father, we just pray that this will be something that can be easily treated and uh, that you will bless them as they move forward. Father, we are mindful of Lois Ann Seton as she continues her rehab. Uh, Father, in Jackson, and we pray that that will continue to go well and that her condition will improve. Uh, we pray for Chucky, um, Lola's friend that's in the sixth grade here, and uh, as he's battling a blood disease, we pray that you will help him through that and help his doctors and those uh, attending to him to make the best decisions for his health as well. Father, we pray for others like Julie Gale Atkinson and uh, Ivan Hurt, uh, Betty Lackey and Audrey Lumpkin, um, and Wanda White as they all recover from surgeries or broken bones and Father, we just pray that their bodies will heal and that their rehabs will go well uh, and that they can get back about their normal routine very soon. Father, we're thankful that Greg Hamlin is improving. We pray that you will continue to help him to do so. Father, uh, we pray that you will be with uh, Joyce Newton as she uh, deals with kidney issues. Uh, and pray that, that that will go well. We pray for Ann Scott as she uh, deals with health issues and that you will bless her and um, Glenn through through all this and father we also pray for uh, Bryant Terry as he uh, will be going for more treatment um, hopefully tomorrow we pray that you will bless him and uh, that things will go well uh, with that and that you will give him strength and patience and courage father also for Melinda Ballantyne as she is in the hospital dealing with pneumonia uh, we pray that you'll be with her and father's Howard has mentioned to us in the office today that that she seems to be improving, and we're thankful for that. Uh, but be with Howard and Katie as they uh, are concerned uh, about her and her health, and we just ask that you will uh, uh, bless her. Father, there are many others on our list. We lift them up to you as well. We pray that you will be with them in their individual situations. Father, there may be others that are on our hearts and minds that have not been mentioned. I pray that you will be with those individuals and in situations as well. Father, thank you for all that you give us. But, Father, we are so thankful for, uh, for Jesus, our Savior, for salvation through his name, uh, for those of us uh, who have uh, called on his name and put him, been buried with him in baptism to rise in newness of life. And, Father, we just pray that you will be with us as we uh, try to share that with others, um, so that, that uh, we might call others uh, through you, uh, that uh, they might come to know you as well. Father, thank you so much. And we pray that you'll watch over us and bless us and forgive us when we fail you. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. All right. Turn back in your Bibles to the book of Exodus. And we're going to primarily look at Exodus chapter 14. But I want us to go back to uh, chapter 9 because I want us to remember some things uh, about what God is saying uh, about why uh, he's hardened Pharaoh's heart about why uh, some of these things are happening in Egypt. Uh, they, he, he has the uh, children of Israel under slavery and serving. But I want you to look at some of these verses, Exodus chapter 9, verse 16. And um, God is declaring to, uh, to Pharaoh, Indeed, for this purpose I have um, raised you up that I might show my power in you and that my name may be declared in all the earth. Uh, did that through Moses and used Pharaoh for that. Uh, chapter 10 and verse 1. Now the Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I may show this, these signs of mine before him. Um, chapter 11 and verse 9. But the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh will not heed you so that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. And um, that's, uh, that's interesting because that we're going to see that again in chapter 14. But I also want you to take notice of the scene that's being set up before we get... What we're going to look at tonight is Exodus chapter 14 and the Red Sea crossing. But I want you to notice something that happens in chapter 12. You remember um, chapter uh, 11... Uh, the, the death of the firstborn is announced in chapter 12. The Passover is instituted and Moses uh, tells the people what they must do. Uh, this is a dark picture, but you can kind of see this actually comes from the, um, the movie The Prince of Egypt, uh, the, uh, the Disney movie. And this is uh, just kind of a cartoon drawing depiction of uh, this um, uh, 
death of the firstborn uh, and the passing over. You remember they were told to uh, the sacrif- take the sacrificial lamb, take the blood, put it on the doorpost and the lentils of their door, and that God would pass over that, okay? Uh, and so that's what he's telling them in chapter 12, and they did that. Uh, and as a result, God passed over them, and uh, their firstborn was not um, w- was not taken. And uh, we could you could go into this talking about uh, connecting the Passover, uh, what what that was about, uh, and the blood, and what we do today in the Lord's Supper. It's not the same, but there is a connection, okay, from that because we take of the Lord's Supper to remember what. Uh, what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. Uh, so that's the scene. But I want you to notice in Exodus chapter 12, and I want you to notice beginning in verse 31. Then he called for Moses and Aaron by night. That's when he, that's, uh, uh, that's Pharaoh. He called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up, go from among my people both you and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as you have said. Also take your flocks, your herds, uh, as you have said, and be gone and bless me also. And the Egyptians urged the people that they might send them out of the land in haste, for they said, "What shall uh, we shall all be dead. So the people took their dough before it was leavened, having their kneading bowls bound up in their clothes, On their shoulders. Now the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses, and they had asked from the Egyptians articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they granted them what they had requested. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. Then the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Succoth, about 600,000 men on foot, besides children. A mixed multitude went up with them also, the flocks and herds, a great deal of livestock, and they baked unleavened cakes of dough, which they had brought out of Egypt, for it was not leavened, because they were driven out of Egypt and could not wait, nor had they prepared provisions for themselves. Now, the sojourn of the children of Israel who lived in Egypt was 430 years. Now, did you catch what's happening here? All through the ten plagues, Pharaoh had said, no, 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 then okay, you can go. And then the plagues were going, he changed his mind. God was hardening his heart. Then, notice in verse 31, he calls for Moses and Aaron to come in. And he says, I want you to go. Go and do what you said you're going to do. But did you notice what he also said? And bless me also. Pharaoh was seen as a god. Pharaoh himself thought he was a god. He said, who is this god that you speak of? I don't know him. Well, now he's telling, he's seen the work of Almighty God, Jehovah God, Yahweh. And now he's telling Moses and Aaron, go do what you said you were going to do and bless me also. Even the Egyptians, they said, just go, leave, unless we shall die also. God gave uh, them favor and they gave them everything. God provided for his people as they were leaving out. And I I just think that's uh, really powerful and interesting uh, to what's going to happen here. All right, uh, here's another picture from uh, the, I call it old, I mean, you know, it's an older TV show, The Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston. Uh, This is their depiction of the uh, Red Sea crossing from Exodus chapter 14. And so I want us to read part of that and talk about it and then read the last part. And um, we're going to start in chapter 13. I want you to notice chapter 13 and verse 17. Then it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines. Although that was near, for God said, lest perhaps the people change their mind when they see war and return to Egypt. You think God knows the people? He knows the people. So God let, led the people around by way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt, and Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, uh, for he had placed the children of Israel under solemn oath, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here with you. So they took their journey from Succoth, 
and camped in Etham at the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light as, uh, so as to go by day and night. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night before the people. Uh, so Moses and some of the people, it seems, remembered what Joseph said back in Genesis chapter 50. At the end of Genesis, you remember, as he is dying, he says, uh, he tells the people, hey, God's going to come and visit you, and I want you to take my bones with you when you leave this place. And for whatever reason, uh, maybe God's reminded Moses, or, or these people just remember. Uh, I don't think they always remembered, but they remembered here, or someone did, and they took Joseph's bones just like he had asked. And the Lord went before them. He guided them. One thing that came to my mind when, when I thought about that, uh, and I think there's a question about this, but I want to take note of it um, real quickly. He led the people. He, he didn't just leave them out to wonder. He, he led the people. And you know, God has always done that, hasn't he? He, uh, he, he did that when, uh, in the New Testament when Jesus came uh, and walked on this earth. He, he led people uh, through Jesus. And then I think about what uh, Paul says in the book of Galatians, uh, Galatians chapter 5, verses 16, 17, and 18. He says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the lust of the flesh, or for the flesh, lust against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another. Uh, I had a, a picture uh, up on the screen a few weeks ago and, and had that clash between uh, the flesh and the Spirit depicted. And so that's what's going to happen. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. And so we're given God's Word uh, as a directive. We're given the, uh, uh, the Spirit of truth, uh, the sword of the Spirit, uh, Paul also says in the book of Ephesians. Uh, and so he's always led his people, and that's an interesting thing. All right, now, real quickly, let's look at... What happens in the first part of this Red Sea crossing? Now the Lord, Exodus 14, spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they turn and camp before pi Hathoroth, between Migdal and the sea opposite uh, Baal-Zephon. You shall camp before it by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are bewildered by the land. The wilderness has closed them in. Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart so that he will pursue them and I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord and they did so. Now isn't it interesting that we, we've seen Pharaoh say, I don't know God, uh, no you can't go, okay you can go, no never mind, okay you can go, never mind, okay you can go, never mind, fine get out of here and bless me also. And now here they are at the, uh, at the sea, at the edge of being able to go into the wilderness and worship their God. And we see God hardening Pharaoh's heart again, and Pharaoh will begin to chase them. And, and that's really the scene I want us to think about over the next few minutes. And they did so. Verse 5, Exodus 14. Now it was told the king of Egypt that the people had fled and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants were turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. Didn't Moses already tell him? What was the original purpose Moses went to Pharaoh? Or, or the thing that he said to them? Let us go into the wilderness that we may worship God. <laughs> what was the message that Moses got that Pharaoh about Pharaoh while he was there? So that they may see my wonders, my power, and they'll know that there is a God in Israel. And here he is saying it again. Verse 6, so he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. Now I want you to notice, get in your mind what he's doing. He's about to chase these slaves that are not armed for battle, by the way. They're armed with all the stuff, all the plunder that God has called the Egyptians to give them. But notice what Pharaoh does. Also, he took 600 choice chariots and all the chariots of Egypt. 
with captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the children of Israel, and the children of Israel went out with boldness. Well, that's interesting. Remember that when we get to our questions. So the Egyptians pursued them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen and his army, and overtook them camping by the sea. They're coming upon them. And uh, verse 10, And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, so they were very afraid. And the children of Israel cried out in a loud to, uh, to the Lord. So they went from marching out in boldness to now they're crying in fear. Then they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? We have... Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that, the, that we told you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Remember this when we get to the questions. Oh my goodness, how quickly we forget. They had forgotten that they had been crying out to the Lord. You should have left us back in Egypt. So, here's what I call faith between a rock and a hard place. The scene is, and, and this is a little bit darker picture, but I, I'll show you another one here in a minute. The scene is that you have the children of Israel, and you can't, you can't see the water, but on one side is the water. Behind them, you see the armies of the Egyptians, Coming to them, and remember, uh, the Bible will say too that uh, the Bible will say that the cloud went around. But in this picture, it's got the fire. But either way, it's representing God. God was uh, in the cloud by day and the the fire by night, guiding them. And, and so, uh, what what happened is God took the cloud. The Bible says and went between the Egyptians and and the Israelites. But that's the scene. They're caught between a rock and a hard place. You ever been there? The scene is, it seems impossible. There is no way out. What are we going to do? You should have left us to die. Were there not enough graves in Egypt? And how quickly they went from be, marching in boldness to now crying in fear. They're caught between a rock and a hard place. They're trapped. And that's the scene where we have them right here in uh, Exodus chapter 14. So what did God do? What did God do? Verse 13. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. In a sense, Moses is saying the same thing. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptian whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. Remember what David said to Goliath? The battle belongs to the Lord. But lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea, and indeed uh, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. So I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over his, all his army, his chariots, and his horsemen. Remember, that's what he's already told them. It's going to happen. Then the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained honor for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. What's the purpose? That there is a God in Israel, and people will know. And the angel of God who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud went from before them and stood behind them. So it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of the Israelites. 
Verse 21, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. Isn't it amazing that God took part of his creation that he's already created, the wind and the water, and he, he puts a, a, a barrier between the Egyptians and the Israelites, and they camp there all night while this wind blows and separates the water and dries the ground. So the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground, and the waters were all uh, were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Imagine that scene. Probably higher than the highest building or higher. And they're walking through. And imagine seeing the waves and the water stand up like that and the ground dry. And they kept going. And the Egyptians pursued and went after them into the midst of the sea. All Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Now it came to pass in the morning, watch uh, that the Lord looked down on the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and the cloud. He troubled the army of the Egyptians and he messed with their wheels on their chariots so that they didn't go right. And so as they're pursuing them, they can't go as fast uh, as they would have been. And then they, Moses and the uh, children of Israel got on the other side. Moses stretched his hand over the sea. Verse 27, when the morning appeared, uh, they returned to the full depth while the Egyptians were fleeing into it. So the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots, the horsemen, and all the army of Pharaoh uh, that came into the sea after them. Not so much as one of them remained. But the children of Israel had walked on dry land in the midst of the sea. And, and the waters were a wall to them on their right and on their left. And here's the key. So the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Now notice their response. Thus Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done in Egypt, so the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Wow. Wow. Sunday morning, we're talking about David, and, and, and I mentioned about the roller coaster of the children of Israel. Here it is in just, oh, man, I don't know, what, 40 verses maybe? 35, 40 verses? And we see them up, boldness. They're marching out in boldness. And then we see them between the rock and the hard place, and they're crying out in fear. And now that we see them walk through the, through the sea on dry land with the water way up there. And imagine, I would be thinking, what in the world? What are we going to do? Roy and I was talking about being up in high places. Roy, can you imagine? What, is that? what if that water falls down on us? And they kept going. And they get on the other side. And they see the waters come down on the Egyptians. And the Bible says, here they are again on the mountaintop. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Powerful, powerful example. And I believe in this story, really all the life of Moses, but in this story, there's some things that we can relate with today. And we'll notice some of those things uh, in our discussion questions. So, so those of you joining us online, uh, we'll keep those questions up on the screen, but we're going to mute the sound, and uh, we appreciate you joining us tonight. Thank you so much. Remember, the Lord saved Israel, but the Lord still saves people today. And we know that, but I want to remind you of a few verses. John 1 and verse 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Of course, that famous passage in John chapter 14, where... Uh, Jesus talked about those mansions. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
No one comes to the Father except through me. And then in chapter 20, uh, after the scene of uh, what we call doubting Thomas, in verse 29, Jesus said to Thomas, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. In Acts chapter 1, real quickly, um, what happens there is uh, those, those men dressed in white, as the disciples are, and apostles are watching Jesus ascend into heaven, he says, men, why do you gaze up here looking into heaven? This same Jesus who you've seen ascend into heaven today, he will come again in like manner. And so as we think about Moses, God saved Israel. God is still saving people today. And as we look around on the news, and the, which I try not to watch much news, but as we look around in our world today, we think, oh my goodness, the world is crazy. What an opportunity to say, you want to go live in that mess or you want to live in eternity with us? Not because we're better than you, but because of Jesus uh, and what he's done. God will save people even today. And we know that, but what an opportunity we have to share that message. All right, real quickly, uh, if you have a question, raise your hand. Roy's got a microphone. Uh,